find out what that was. Hey, hey, hello. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. I don't know what I'm doing this with my hands, but it's fine. I clearly lost my mind. Welcome or welcome back. Whichever. Hello. Um, today I'm going to tell you about some books that I've read recently. I've read recently. What is this accent? Uh, I'm going to tell you about some books I've read recently that haven't been featured in my vlogs. <laughs> I say vlogs because are they really vlogs? I mean, they're not really sit down videos, so I suppose they're more like vlogs, but also, are they? That's a discussion for later. Anyway, I've got some books. I've got three books. Decent sized books. Well, two decent sized and one chunky bitch. Uh, so let's just uh, get into it, shall we? Yeah. So the first one I have is Empress of All Seasons by Amico Jean. I think that's how you pronounce the name. If not, I'm sorry, I am a crappy person. So I'm not sure if this is based on some like myths or legends or anything of the sorts, but this is a book. <laughs> There's like different kinds of people. Some have abilities, others do not. And uh, some are considered slaves, so that's great. More or less everyone is considered a slave unless you are of a certain bloodline, I suppose. So we follow a, diff a few different characters. We mainly follow, what is her name again? So her name is something, Mari. Yes, Mari. So the way they like like the emperor chooses a wife is by having a bunch of girls competing for it hunger game style <laughs> um it's so there's like different rooms they go into and the rooms are based on seasons so whichever season the the coming emperor the son of the emperor rather is born in is like the last room apparently so it c they can start in any season and they apparently do this because of some old tradition which we get like the story behind the traditions and stuff uh, between the chapters mari is technically considered one of the slaves although she's like slave people i suppose i guess but she's grown up in like all this all woman female village where basically the females when they are like of a mature age they go get married and then <laughs> get pregnant and rob the man blind and goes back to the village that's their tradition and if the child they then give birth to is a boy they will like float this boy down the river and yeah basically they just keep the females it's very harsh mari is one of <laughs> these females she so so her aim is basically that she is supposed to go compete and uh, win the prize of the emperor get married get pregnant steal all his fortune and come back home uh basically the gist of it super weird there's like some other stuff going on as well she has this like i guess childhood friend that's in love with her but she doesn't have like those kinds of feelings for him it's a it's a thing it's a thing although there's like loads of things that are like what the freaking hell uh, I kind of enjoy this book. It was very easy to read and although it kind of ends in a well we could have a sequel, we could have more, we could find out like what happens after. It is a standalone book so chops. The writing is like beautiful. 
easy, simple, beautiful, everything you need. Why am I doing this today? Ugh, disgusting. Um, so I enjoyed it. It's not the next favourite book in the world, but I really enjoyed the, like, the visual aspect that the writing gives. So, loads of things in this book that I <laughs> was like, really? Slaves? And no? Um, yeah, I enjoyed it. Another book that was like, do I really understand what's happening? No. But I'd read, uh, so I technically read a different book, but a couple of years ago I found, um, I think it was like the debut book by Kieran Millwood Hargrave. And it was beautiful. Stunning. I mean, the writing and the story was beautiful, but also the whole book was beautiful. So, win-win. So, I'd been, like, on the hunt for more Kieran books, but I kind of forgotten about them. As can happen when there's so many books in the world. So, kind of this year, last year, maybe more, um, I started hunting them more. So, I read... I read one not too long ago, uh, and now I've read this. This is The Dance Tree by Kira Mill. Okay, I did not mention that point. I mean, it's stunning. <sighs> so basically, I think it's based on... It's based of this old, like, story. Not story. It's based on, like, events that happen in, like, the 1500s or something like that. Uh, where basically this woman starts to dance in the street and she just keeps dancing non-stop for like days, weeks, months. I don't know how long she danced for, but I, I think she died in the end by dance. I should really look up facts, shouldn't I? Nah. Tom. Cool. Please don't knock the camera down though. You good? Good boy. While we get this, like, dancing story, basically people go mad and start dancing on the street, there's this woman. What's her name again? Lisbeth. Lisbeth. She's, she's pregnant. Does she have the baby? She does have the baby, doesn't she? That doesn't matter. So we start the story with Lisbeth. She's like, shh out there pregnant and she's very like afraid of losing this baby because she's lost a lot of babies previously for every like baby she's lost she's tied the, these ribbons on this tree in the forest where they live um which is basically what the dance tree is also apparently an old patron thing so in the 1500s that's probably not the best because it's one of those, witch, witch, you're a witch. You'll be burned. <laughs> so yeah, Lisbeth lives with her husband and his mum. It took me a while to figure out how the connections were. When the book starts, she's like ordered to prepare or clean up the room that's been locked and kept under lock and key because the husband's sister is coming back after a like seven year penance for a crime. It takes a while for us to find out what the crime is. Hello. You're very cute. It takes a while for us to find out what the crime is. And it's, it's heartbreaking really that she has to go through that. And at the same time, the like the the church, the priest there are like, well, your bees, because they're a bee farm, apparently, um, your bees are stealing the nectar from our flowers because that's the only flowers about. Yeah, maybe because you're taking all the water from everyone else and making sure your flowers are watered and growing and thriving because you're thieves you bloody 
priests. So basically the husband has to go away, tell them that the bees are theirs because the priest wants to take the honey because they're gonna build a statue or something from the wax. It's a weird thing. Um, it's, it's a weird book. It's beautiful when you like get into it, but it's such a weird book. I don't even know where to start with it. Oh, hello. Tom is everywhere today. Now he's above me. Anyway, I don't really know what to say about the book, but it's, I guess I like the fine, confusing AF, but you know, can understand all the books. So this one, <laughs> I started to read this book last year and like last year, February or something. Although there was a live show for it, uh, I did, I'm pretty sure I did say I hadn't finished the book, which I hadn't uh, <laughs> at the time, but I have now. And it's To Sleep in a Sea of Stars by Christopher Paolini. So, chunky AF book. Why? Why, why, why? So, Christopher Paolini writes chunky, chunky books. Uh, if you've seen like the size of the Aragon books, chunky chunky books. But apparently there is like a, so this is kind of a standalone, it's a standalone book in a series. I don't know how to explain it, but there is another book which is supposedly a, I guess, prequel kind of a deal. And it's about this thick. <laughs> From what I've seen, but you know, pictures can be deceiving. Anyway, so when I first started reading this book, it was very much a is this a f alien fan fiction? Because <laughs> I remember I took I took notes from like after every two chapters or something like that, <laughs> and from every all the notes I took, and after that I stopped taking notes because that was like. No, I don't care anymore. So, but from the notes, all the notes were like, this is alien. Like the movie's alien. And like finishing the book, there's so many more references to aliens. So there's like, at one point she says her name is Ellen, as in Ellen Ripley, the main character. So there's like a ship AI, which is called Bishop, which is what like the synthetic AI is called in Alien. There, she's a, I can't say the word, like xenobiologist, which xenomorph is what the aliens are called. There's so many references to Alien. Um, to all the alien movies by Ridley Scott. It's insane. It's basically a alien fan fiction that's this big. It's a brick. It's more than a brick. <laughs> I mean, it's not bad, but it's not great. As far as fan fiction goes, it's, it's great, but why? Also, the book could have been like, Let's see, the book could have been more than half this size because there's so many things happening that's useless. <laughs> well, not useless, but there's so many things happening that are like, did we need this? Because they go around and around and around in space and uh, yeah, there's a lot of plot things happening that we could have done without not gonna lie could have been like half the book and still been just as fun so it went away from me oh it went so far away so basically i read a bunch of books that were a bit mediocre 
I mean, I think my favorite must be the Empress of All Seasons out of all of these. The book, the books in itself were in themselves weren't terrible, but also I could have lived without having read them. Yeah, I could have lived without having read these books, which is terrible. It's terrible. Anyway. Thank you so much for staying on and listening to all my ramblings and uh, you know if you read these books please tell me what your thoughts on them were because I would like to know and if you can explain any of them please do. But yeah until next time take care bye bye.